What's up, David here with Heart Magic Blog. Living with my cousin aortic valve. Uh, I forget the name of my own channel sometimes. Uh, <laughs> uh, welcome to the show. Um, again, I'm about to go into the gym, so I'm making a little video, uh, and I'm just gonna, kinda, I guess, kind of just make a habit of this. Uh, there's no point. Uh, this is not a gigantically formal channel. I am not a cardiologist. I am not giving medical advice. I am just giving you my research experience as a patient uh, of someone who lives with bicuspid aortic valve, uh, which is a congenital heart defect. Uh, the main heart valve, uh, the aortic valve, is supposed to open with three little leaflets like that. They're born fused together, so they open like that. Lots of people get it. Uh, it's one of the most common heart defects. Uh, I have it. People like Arnold Schwarzenegger have it. Uh, John Ritter. Uh, you know, only cool people get it, basically. So, uh, we're, I, I was symptomatic a few years ago, and I was told that I needed to get surgery for this. Uh, and arguably, one day, I may need to get surgery for it. Uh, but for now, I was like, you know what? Screw it. Uh, you know, put down your knives, doctor. You know, he was sitting there sharpening them. Uh, and ready to cut me open to, to change the valve because I decided that I was going to get stem cells and see how that was going to treat my situation. Now, the reason that they were going to have me do stem cells is, uh, you know, because of some complications that were starting to happen. But today's video uh, is going to be specifically how to implement the stem cells uh, and what that process is like. There's technically three four-ish different ways of doing it. And so I'm gonna explain those in case you're interested in trying it. Uh, it can, you know, you could give it a shot. Um, <clears throat> uh, so keeping in mind, I I'm gonna go through my uh, situation real quick before I get into them, just so that you understand kind of the, uh, you know, my angle of it. Um, my, again, my aortic valve is uh, born wonky. And so uh, it's more likely to regurgitate uh, and also collect calcium on it, which is called stenosis. Uh, and my regurgitation really is, I mean, regurgitation is really the main thing that I'm experiencing right now. And I don't really, as far as I know, I don't have coronary artery disease or anything like this. Um, so my case is pretty straightforward. My heart valve isn't closing all the way. My heart was expanded because of alcoholism, because of stress, because of uh, lack of self-care. And, you know, I had to quit drinking alcohol, would thank God, you know. Uh, I did that during the pandemic uh, when I had the time to do it and um, got my, I've been getting my stress down as much as possible, um, but it didn't change the fact that my left ventricle was expanded to the, and that is the chamber right at the aortic valve that with the, with the blood flow backwards uh, will expand. There was too much blood there. It's expanding. So, uh, and I have high blood pressure too. Uh, I'm working on the high blood pressure right now uh, with diet, with exercise, with stress management, with uh, a wide variety of things, supplements. And uh, today I want to go through the actual steps with the stem cells because for me, they worked. And they worked because uh, they uh, they healed the left ventricle to the point by an entire centimeter, uh, which put it into the category of no need for surgery. I'm ho they work for supposedly up to a year. Some people say they only start really working at like three, four months, can top out at six months, eight months, a year. Uh, just assume that you're gonna have the, uh, as long as you take care of your body, you're gonna have the potential benefits for up to a year once you implement them into your system. So I've got a few months left, uh, you know, maybe three months left or whatever. Uh, and I'm most definitely going back for more, for sure. But I wanna get my blood pressure down. I wanna take care of things which is uh, an important point to note, again, because stem cells are not um, A to B thing. For some people, they are. But in my case, um, if I'm eating crap, if I'm, uh, you know, binge eating, I'm doing addictive behaviors with food, it's going to overload my system with too much energy and that I, my body isn't able to process. Uh, this is the importance of, you know, getting your macros right, you know, the protein, the uh, fat, and the carbohydrates. Um, you know, everything. So, <clears throat> and then also knowing the other underlying causes of stuff that you could have going on uh, with your heart, with your the rest of your body. Um, it's also very important to cleanse out your liver, your kidneys, and all these things, uh, your blood, so that uh, you're not just trying to put a... a stem cells are a great band-aid, but they are not a full fix, a full cure, if you don't take care of the systemic stuff going on with you. So I say all of that just to give a history, just to give some uh, some caveats uh, so that before we get into this. So how do we actually implement stem cells uh, in the area of, 
DIY heart fixing. Um, well, again, there are stem cells. First of all, there are stem cells available in the United States, which is where I'm located. Unfortunately, they're the very much the McDonald's type stuff. Uh, they're frozen. They're uh, sort of kind of ultra processed uh, in a way that makes them not as good as getting fresh stem cells, lab grown stem cells that are out there. Um, and the types of stem cells that you get really matter. Um, and you can get them from your bone marrow, you can get them from your fat, uh, you can get them from many places on your body. In fact, I think you can even take them, I believe you could take them from your heart, that people have taken them out of the heart, mix them around, put them back into the heart kind of a thing. Um, oh, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work to, you know, even people um, who have kids and they want to bank the stem cells, I'm not saying that you can't use those, but you have to process them later. And are you going to be able to apply them in the United States in the way that you want to do it? I don't know about that. Uh, they, you know, there's laws against this stuff. Now, I'm not saying that I know everything. Again, I don't, that's saying that I know everything about cardiology and all this different stuff. I just think that they should be available in conjunction with surgery because, <clears throat> um, you know, I think people think that I'm trying to put cardiologists out of business. I'm not. Um, I care very much about you guys being able to pay off those expensive student loans and buy your expensive cars and all that stuff. You go right ahead. Uh, but stem cells, you know, make money off the stem cells. I don't care, you know. Uh, but the fact is, is that these are very highly effective things. You know, the fact that I was able to get my blood, my left ventricle shrank without getting my blood pressure down. I mean, that is a huge testament to how effective these things are. But for now, you got to go to, I went to Costa Rica. Uh, there's places in Mexico. There's places in other Central American countries, South America. Do your research, find a clinic that speaks to you um, and everything like that. Um, I'm not going to go through all of the ways that you can get stem cells. There are, uh, I believe embryonic stem cells are the ones that are like, have to do with, or maybe not embryonic. I don't know. The ones that have to do with like abortions and stuff like that. I'm not advocating for those types of stem cells. Most people don't even use them. Um, and I think that there are, uh, um, negative, like, I think that they could foster cancers and stuff like that because of the way that they're taken and the rest of the other types of stem cells don't do that. As far as we know. Um, I think that there probably are, uh, you know, as far as risks go, I think that there's a check before, if you have cancer before you go because uh, to get stem cells, because if you do have cancers, uh, it's potential, potential that they could aggravate them. It's also potential that they could help cure them. So um, it's kind of this gray area kind of a thing. Check your body um, and whatnot. So those are the types of stem cells. Those are some of the risks uh, that are with it. Otherwise, there's no real risk of like rejection when you get the the uh, MSCs, the Michael, Mes Mes I can't even say it. This is how much of a cardiologist I am not. Um, the MSCs, the umbilical cords, uh, stem cells, those are the ones that help your heart the best. Uh, there's there's uh, a few other ones that are out there. Um, again, I'm not too up to date on all of them. I just know the, 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 the umbilical cord ones are the ones that <clears throat> I used and they worked on me. So I don't know where those uh, came from, but you should definitely, uh, you know, do your research and try to find a place that uh, utilizes stem cells that are, that they get them in an ethical way and all this stuff. I know that the babies need them uh, technically, but I think that the amount that they take relative to the amount that the baby gets, I think that we could sit there and say, okay, there's probably a net positive type of a situation. I certainly, um, uh, don't want to think that I've taken something from a poor little baby, but I don't, th I don't think that I, as far as when you, again, stack the math, I don't think that it's there. So how do you actually implement these stem cells? Once you go to a place and they have a clinic and they say, I have a bottle of stem cells, uh, and you go, you know, give me, uh, what do they do? Well, there's a few different ways. What I did was an IV drip. This is the most basic thing. They just literally just stick a needle in your arm and boom, you get some stem cells, uh, into your bloodstream. There's some positives and negatives to this. The positive is uh, you get them right into your bloodstream. It's going to pass through the heart no matter what. It's going to sit there and probably uh, uh, sit in the heart for a second or two uh, and really get in there because especially if you have like, you know, expanded left ventricle like me, you know, it's sagging. It's going to sit there and, you know, so there's kind of this like gravitational weight there. I think that that helps. 
Um, the downside to this is that uh, the, the word in the industry is that a lot of them go to your lungs. I'll be honest, that's if you have heart trouble and perhaps if you were a smoker or a drinker or something that's pro and sedentary, that's probably not the worst thing in the world. It's probably good that you get some to your lungs because the lungs are connected to the heart, which are connected to the bloodstream and all this stuff. It's all connected. So, uh, so it's good that your lungs get better. And so this is the point, uh, like you may need to go back for more treatments. I think most people averagely need at least two treatments for this to really push their situation forward. The, again, that, that those stem cells could go other places. And for me, I wanted them to go other places. I don't want it to, I would love for it, the stem cells to be isolated to the heart. But, um, the fact of the matter is, you know, me getting the benefits other places arguably is good for the whole system. So an IV drip is a very accessible way to get the stem cells delivered through your bloodstream uh, into your system and whatnot. But it is a super highway. Everything's moving. It's in the blood. It's moving everywhere. It's not an actual tissue. Which leads me to the next uh, spot, um, which is, you know, so an IV drip is pretty affordable uh, at the moment in, in time in 2023. Anywhere from 10000 to 15000 20000 uh, you could be spending, depending on the quantity of stem cells that you're getting, 300 million was what I got. And I think that that's a great number um, from everything that I've read. The other way of delivery, there's, a, again, a few other methods. Um, the other method of delivery is through them putting you under. They get a catheter directly to your heart and they take a little needle and they stick it directly into the tissue. Where they put it, how they do it without popping something uh, is beyond me again not a cardiologist uh, but they stick a, they stick that in there and they actually directly deliver it into the tissue itself of the heart this is um, this is a, a very expensive to do does the cost money wise deliver the best result relative to what it is that could happen I mean if you got the money to throw down and you're like I want the best hey go right ahead and do it um, however, I, uh, you know, uh, being a humble person, uh, could not sit there and just throw down the money like that. So I got the IV drip and I got results with it. <clears throat> you know, it, it, in my situation, would it be better to get the directly into the tissue? Yes, because I have that valve that's expanded. My heart's expanded. <clears throat> the more that I could get that shrunk, the better. You know, it's kind of up in the air as to whether or not I'm going to be able to shrink my valve and shrink the, the slight aneurysm that I have in my aorta. But um, again, cost-wise, I have to try to push in other areas. It's free, technically, for me to try to get my blood pressure down and to try to shrink my heart in that way and try to do more stem cells, just sort of blasting them in there, than it is to sit there and try to go and get, be put under, get my stem cells extracted, or even if they're just putting the MSCs in there, uh, to try to do that. It's expensive to get a cardiologist in there, even in a foreign country. So, um, that's more like anywhere from 60, 70, 80, or a hundred thousand dollars from what I've researched. A cheapisher way to do that is to get something called a PIC line, P-I-C-C. I don't know too much about this. A guy that I was chit-chatting with on the Facebook uh, said that he was thinking of doing that and it's basically a tube that they put in your arm all the way up into or this side into the heart and I think it's kind of like they uh, deliver the stem cells directly into the heart I don't necessarily know if they could go into the tissue with this so do your research uh, if this is something that you're thinking of doing um, I think that that's better than a pick line is something that they just straight up put in there it's different than a catheter for some reason they don't put you under i again i don't really know too much about it um with this particular element so do your research there. that might be a more affordable way to get it directly delivered into the heart but if it's just putting it into the bloodstream just in a more direct way i mean i'll be flat out honest it may just be worth doing an iv drip you know the human body every pump and everything it, it pushes the, the the entire blood flows through the system very quickly so are you getting more out of doing the pick line if it's just delivering into the bloodstream? I would argue probably not enough to justify doing it. So this is opinion. So um, so there's the, the the catheter or the pick line. That's sort of direct delivery. If you could get it directly into the tissue, that's probably best. 
the last method of delivering stem cells into your body for use of your heart. Um, I did not invent this method. I am revealing it here. I've been trying to get my friend uh, to come uh, to do kind of a video interview. We're sort of missing each other at every path, but I met this dude named Tim. Uh, I'm not gonna say his last name here just because I don't know if he wants me to put it out there, but uh, he's a really nice guy, super funny, super friendly. Um, and he was like a death story. He doesn't have a bicuspid valve. He is, he's one of those tricuspid people. Um, but they, um, <laughs> but he, uh, he was like at death's door and had a really poor heart and got, started doing the stem cell work. And he came across a study that was done and basically long story short, found an alternative method of delivery that is very accessible through going through the stem cell clinics in South America. And uh, I'm going to say this now, it's his sort of story to tell uh, in terms of his me method of getting there. But again, for the sake of getting the information out there and trying to promote this stuff, I'm just going to say it right now. So Tim, sorry if I'm <laughs> doing your big reveal here, but, uh, but most definitely credit goes to you. Um, this method of delivery helps slow the stem cells through your system um, to the heart. It's basically a combination of an IV drip plus uh, intramuscular delivery. And this is what I'm going to be doing next time that I go um, to get stem cells. And basically what you're doing is you are putting like 20 different, putting stem cells in like a bunch of different spots in your body, like 10 million, 20 million cells here and there. And it helps slow the delivery. It goes through the muscle system. It's sort of, instead of going through the bloodstream, it seems to go, get slowed down through the system. Now, if you don't have inflammation in a certain area, nothing needs to get healed. I think the cell, cells move past that. And I think it's kind of one of those things where all roads lead back to the heart. So it, it slows the stuff down. So if you, if you deliver stem cells right here, you don't really have any inflammation going on. Well, it's just going to go at the, cause again, they gravitate towards where the inflammation is. So I, you know, you have to, uh, this is, uh, again, it's one of those things where like they have studies on it. It's this nice alternative thing. And so for Tim, he was again at death's door and now he's been told that he has basically a near perfect heart you know, for somebody who was in that position to now be complete opposite, just like, oh my God, this person is thriving and, and living their life and <clears throat> engaging in sports and all this stuff. Um, and even at a, I mean, he's, you know, uh, uh, I'm assuming in his fifties, um, you know, uh, it, that's a really amazing, significant thing. Um, and everything. So I think that what that does is it's sort of this alternative to uh, uh, the blood flow delivery where it's sort of shooting everywhere. This is sort of like you get that effect by cutting the, if you do like 400, 200 million stem cells in your blood, 200 million stem cells at 10 different spots in your body, boom, you know, you've got multiple ways that you're getting the stem cells to go through your system and it's going to strengthen everything in a different way. So that's my plan to do next time um, is to do sort of that combo and everything. And I really have to thank Tim uh, for putting that out there um, and to, you know, sharing that information with me. Um, I think the more we could get the word out about this, the better. Not because I want to uh, um, uh, put anybody out of work or whatnot. I just think it's ridiculous that we don't have access to these things, that it's... Uh, uh, you know, again, there's for most sicknesses and illnesses, there's usually a simple cure. Uh, even cancers, it's been surprising to me that I've just sort of come across different cancer treatments using I, I think the last one I saw was like some dog medicine that's like five bucks uh, helped this dude cure his cancer. Uh, he had like late stage stuff. It was spread all over his body and boom, he's cancer free now look that up um, if you're interested in that stuff. But, you know, that I, I'm not an expert in that by any means either. But uh, what I'm saying is that most things have a simple cure. Most uh, uh, things in the medical industry, um, you know, a lot of people over inflate the amount that we're charging people over inflate the uh, amount of care towards one particular thing. When you know, sometimes there are just simple things that could be done. 
now obviously stem cells are one of those things that like your body produces them naturally you can get them through fasting uh you know so if you want to kind of starve yourself a little bit you can uh, uh, you know, do water fast, bone broth fast. You can actually stimulate stem cell growth in your body, uh, even in the heart. But does it target those things? Not as much as injecting the stem cells. This is a new technology, but it's a very, uh, but uh, in my opinion, benign technology where there's, uh, you're not doing something that's like, you're not having to wait for, you know, a transplant. You know, a transplant requires medications. It requires uh, uh, hardcore surgery, potential rejection, all this stuff, when boom, stem cells could be doing, pulling a lot of that weight for you. I mean, that's incredible. And I think that that kind of a sort that knowledge needs to be out there. And if nothing else there, you could have a janky, I have a janky heart valve. I may want to replace it anyway, just for the sake of replacing it and to stop going in these cycles. Do you think I'm going to do stem cells in conjunction with that? You betcha. So does does any of this put anybody out of business necessarily? No, nah, I mean, in my opinion, no. I think that it expands the opportunity for money making. It expands the opportunity for uh, different applications. Um, it's unfortunate that I uh, have to go about this in my own way. But uh, that's, I mean, what else am I going to be doing with my time other than trying to survive? You know what I mean? So, um, so those are the methods of delivery for stem cells. You have the IV drip, you have the intramuscular, you have the pick line, and then you have the catheter direct tissue injection of all those things you know make a decision that works well for you if you want to try this stuff um do at your own risk uh you know uh whatever but um in my case they did something great will they fix everything i sure hope so uh but there's going to be other things that go along with it that i have to do that uh are going to make sure that this becomes something that is uh going to really actually work for me for the rest of my life uh and again there could be things that happen that uh that put put it on me to necessitate to get surgery anyway so um so uh you know do your research understand your heart draw a picture of your heart get a real good look at what your heart is how it is and what it's doing uh and figure out a, a method of treatment in conjunction with your doctors or alternative doctors uh that are gonna that are gonna help uh, make it happen so thanks so much this is an episode of heart magic subscribe if you like turn on the notification bell uh, i'm trying to just um you know talk about this stuff. I'm, I know I'm going to be going through supplements and different tools that I use uh, to try to help my heart. So stay tuned for that stuff and I'll, I'll get to it when I get to it. <laughs> Thanks so much. And I'll talk to you soon.